Hi guys, so we've looked at uh, registering custom tasks and alias tasks and multitasks and uh, we've, uh, we haven't looked at loading external or loading NPM tasks. So t NPM tasks are really sort of like plugins for Grunt.js and uh, what led me down this road was I was wondering how I'd actually interact with the system and I ran into a post over here which showed um, let me make this a little bigger showed an example and since grunt.js is built on top of node.js you can use uh, anything available to node.js and so this guy is getting exec and then he's building you know a command line string here and then he calls exec so I saw that but it didn't seem idiomatic of how I would think you'd want to do that and it turns out the idiomatic way is to um, to use a plugin and grunt shell seems to be the one that does that and if you actually look at this uh, source here for grunt shell he's also using the uh, child process exec I'll make this a little bigger right and some other stuff um, but we shouldn't probably be doing that uh, ourselves. So, uh, looking at this, the directions pretty much say just do an npm install grunt shell in your project and then you load the npm task. So let's go ahead and do that now. Grunt init grunt file and we'll just say no to everything. Um, let's open this up. And we have a, a grunt file. Let's delete this stuff. We're going to really strip this down, do stuff from scratch. Okay. And let's go ahead and npm install that grunt shell plugin. And that's going to fetch grunt shell and stick it in this node modules directory. So if we look in there, everything including the readme is there so we can actually just snatch this and put this into our grunt shell and notice we put it outside of the init config okay um, and then this gives us a nice little abstraction where we can um, get this shell uh, task and then we can create targets so if I create a target foo with a command to echo uh, hi from foo that should be valid and now we can just register that task uh, whoops register task foo and we point that it's a multitask um, this this shell is a multitask so we can use the multitask syntax where we have a uh, task shell and a target foo so now if we just go into the command line and say grunt foo we don't see our message why don't we see our message well you need to pass a flag standard out true and uh, it looks like standard out is suppressed by default and now we see our high from foo if you need to see more on the configuration, just look at this readme file that comes down. And you can see there's uh, a lot of uh, directions or example code. And, um, and uh, you can just take a look at that. Let's uh, go back to our idea of compiling various products. If you recall from a different episode, we had a... Uh, we were we had a situation where we were compiling trial pro and enterprise products so let's set that up uh, let's say uh, building trial and we're going to add a pro version building pro and we'll do one more this will be we'll call this int for enterprise building int. We just want to verify that this is all set up correct. Uh, this is going to be trial 
you're going to set up three tasks, or register three tasks. Pro go points to shell of pro and an int, which points to int. That'll be our enterprise task. So now we should be able to say grunt trial. Yes, grunt pro, grunt int. Okay, so those are all working fine. Now let's imagine that, um, well, we'd probably do have a shell script that would parse out. Uh, maybe we'd have pragmas like pro only or pro ent, and then we'd strip that out for trial or something. Um, and then maybe that would all be done from a, an aux script or something. But let's just imagine that somehow we've um, done that, and we have a we have corresponding versions in uh, in a source directory. So let's say we say make directory trial, and then uh, copy over source uh, app trial. So again, maybe we've we've generated this from some intermediary script, right? So let's go ahead and put these for uh, for each one. So we'll say make directory pro and one more for int building int. Okay, so now uh, we need to go ahead and uh, create the source directory, and then we'll touch uh, source. Um, what was it? App and app trial. App trial source app and js and source app. Uh, pro.js let's source and we've got our files let's just echo um, window alert just so we can identify which one uh, hi from int that should be fine and we'll redirect that into the app int we'll do a pro And we just want a way to verify that our build is working correctly. Okay. So now if we say, let's just see, do we have any? Okay, so if we do grunt trial, that'll result in a trial directory. And if we cat trial uh, app, See, I think I, I, yeah, I forgot the destination directory in my copy commands. So this will be trial app.js, and this will be uh, pro app.js, and this will be ent app.js. Okay, let's try that again. But let's let's go ahead and we don't have a clean task yet, so. We'll just remove that, but let's try grunt trial, and then we'll crack trial JS. I mean trial app JS. Let's do grant grunt pro and cat our pro app JS, and let's do a grunt ent and cat ent app JS. So we've got a little build system, and if you need to do this for reals. Uh, you can elaborate on this, and uh, I would probably take one of these steps, and um, maybe maybe there's an intermediary proce process that uh, that does something like generate uh, app dot shell, and that can do a whole bunch of stuff to maybe zip through one uh, app dot js file and look for pragmas, and um, you could use awk for that, um, or whatever you need to do. But you get the idea that uh, the possibility of doing this sort of thing uh, can now work because we can interact with the um, with the shell. So this is an npm task, this grunt shell, and there's all sorts of cool uh, extensions to grunt.js with these. If you want to compile uh, less to CSS or 
SAS to CSS or you know those types of things you can search for the uh, usually it's called grunt hyphen contrib hyphen less or whatever the thing is uh, and there's a number of them and and um, so it's a nice addition to register task and we don't have to actually go in there and 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 build this sort of thing ourselves. Um, so you see this is a you know maybe a 50 line function he registered a multitask and um, you know we could interact with node.js directly ourselves but it's probably better to let one guy do it and then um, he can refine it and battle test it um, and kill any bugs that creep up so that's about it for loading npm tasks and i hope you got something out of it